So I'm going to bring up Donna Mills, who is the chief housing officer for NRHA, and she's going to talk about property management updates. Thanks, Kim. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. I'm glad we came out to the community. Hopefully we can get some of your questions answered tonight while we're here. Um, as Kim said, I am the chief housing officer, so I have a lot of hats that I wear. Um, I oversee the property management department, which oversees the community that you live in. Hopefully all of you know your property manager, Ms. Angela Higgins, who's back in the back of the room. If you don't, please go by the office and introduce yourself to her. She's here to assist you with whatever concerns or questions or needs that you have. Sitting next to her is Wanda Green. I'm sure all of y'all know Wanda Green. She is your resident service specialist. So as Kim mentioned, we have uh, points of contact that have been identified for those residents that live in phase one. Wanda is your personal contact if you live in phase two, three, and four. So she's your resource. If you need any assistance with anything, you need to go ahead and start working on addressing any concerns you might have so that when we do get closer to possible relocation, you will already have that looked at and Ms. Green will be able to assist you with addressing any concerns and making any referrals that you may need. Also in the back of the room is Ms. Carolyn Ledford. Carolyn, if you raise your hand, if you don't know Ms. Ledford, she is the Asset Zone Manager for Tidewater Gardens. So she is the next level. If you are having some difficulties and you don't feel that you're getting an answer here at the property level, then you can contact Ms. Ledford. She'll be here for the meeting, so if you need to talk to her or get her contact information, you can do that before you leave this evening. But she would be your next contact to assist you with whatever your concerns or your um, questions might be. So we also have a new maintenance superintendent that's here in Tidewater. He's not with us tonight, but his name's Stephen Firth. I don't know if y'all have all met him yet or not. We are working on recruiting for some new maintenance staff. I'm sure you're aware that we are short here currently with the maintenance department, but we are working on getting that fully staffed back up so we can make sure we're addressing your needs quicker than we probably are right now. So as a chief housing officer, I have another number of other staff that work for me. I oversee the Housing Choice Voucher Program. So as we're moving forward with this effort and we're looking at those families who want a voucher, you'll be working with me and my staff for that as well. And I also oversee the relocation staff. Uh, right now, we have two staff members, uh, Shirley Broom and Albert Lewis. Some of you may know them. Uh, they're not with us here tonight as well. Uh, but you will be getting to know them as we move forward and start working with families, especially in phase one as we talk about relocation choices. So one of the big responsibilities I have is to look at our policies every year and see if there's any changes that we need to make to our policy. Um, we, as part of the annual forum, we kick that off. And part of what we'll look for tonight is any questions or concerns that you may have about any of the policies that NRHA has. And we'll take that back and look at those to see if there's possibly some revisions that need to be made. So that is briefly in a nutshell. And I'm going to, I think, go ahead and introduce Mr. Rick O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill is our facilities management director. He oversees our specialized maintenance department. So let's give it up for him. Good afternoon. Thank you for attending. Uh, as she stated, I run the facilities management department off of uh, Ballantyne Boulevard. We have all the specialty shops in there that build your kitchen cabinets, installs floor tile, takes care of all the bulk trash out here, painting, plastering, a little bit of everything, your grounds, all along that line. Uh, we deal with mold issues, as most of you I'm surely aware of, uh, and we're, we're here to assist you in any way we can. One big announcement that I have is our upcoming holiday season around the Christmas holidays is that we have uh, an issue with the, the, the city and, and their trash pickup, so they're going to be placing dumpsters within your community, and I think you had some of that news come out in your newsletter, but expect some flyers coming out soon. And, uh, and and just they're going to be placed throughout the community. So just try to assist in any way you can getting that trash to those locations. And if the dumpsters get too too full, they're going to come out, pick them up, and dump them again in between that time frame. So thank you very much. And turn it over to Kim. Thank you, Rick. 
I want to just give Rick a special shout out because what you all don't know is when we have inclement weather, whether it's snow or hurricanes or hurricane-like activities, Rick is the guy that comes out three, four, five o'clock in the morning and checks to make sure that we're okay. So thank you very much, Rick. He's probably been up since three o'clock this morning, so that's why I jumped him up on the schedule so he can actually leave. Um, four, he said four. All right, he likes to be exact too. Next, we're gonna bring up Ela Smith. Ela is the client services director, and she's gonna talk about all the client services programs. Good evening, everyone. So Kim gave me seven minutes, but I'm gonna take three. All right. Uh, because I have the Boastful Client Services team in the back ready to tell you all about the services, the many services that Client Services has to offer. So please, as you work to exit, please take the time to come to our table and learn more about all of the services and resources that we have to offer. Uh, really quick summary about Client Services is, um, well, first and foremost, let me thank you all for those who answered your door and took that survey, that was us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your time. Thank you, many of you provided us waters on them hot days and let us sit on your couches. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That information was definitely put to good use. Steve used it uh, in that CNI application and uh, fingers crossed. Uh, we will get that. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, so Client Services has really about six core programs. And I know them, I just have to keep notes because if I leave out one of them, I will hear about it. So, <laughs> all right. So our first program is ran by Ms. Uh, Linda Davenport and she's our economic inclusion manager, economic opportunities, excuse me, manager. <laughs> Thank you. If you have questions about starting your own business, if you have questions about starting a nonprofit, uh, where to start, what to do, Linda's the person that you talk to. If you have a, a goal to get your driver's license, she also teaches our driver's ed. Uh, we even have a little cool simulator so you don't have to practice on your parents' car first. <laughs> Linda can assist you with the simulator as well. Um, so we do have opportunities and, and resources and services available for individuals who are looking to start their own business or nonprofit. We also have workforce development. I like to say we, we know how to get you a job, keep you employed, help you save, and take care of your kids all at the same time. That's what client services does. So we have workforce development programs. We have two workforce development programs. Many of you all are aware of the uh, grant that we received from HUD for Jobs Plus, which is right uh, to provide jobs related services out of Young Terrace. Uh, so Jobs Plus exists in the Young Terrace community. Uh, but we also have workforce development, which is currently managed by Miss Lucy Major in the back. Uh, Miss Major and her team, uh, I see another employment specialist, Keisha, back there. Uh, they are the ones that bring you these lovely employment resource fairs where we promise to educate you about an industry and provide you an opportunity to interview directly with that that uh, employer uh, who has made commitments to us to hire. Uh, so when we say we're having an employment fair in the community, know that we work with the employer to say, not only educate our residents on the growth potential, because that's very important, on the growth potential of your company and in this industry, but don't waste our time and just tell us all about it. Make sure you have some employment opportunities available for them. So that wonderful workforce development team uh, works to put those employment resource fairs together for us. Um, family self-sufficiency program. That's our boastful one back there. She She's the one who screams and dances. Ms. Gwen Williams is our uh, manager of our family self-sufficiency program. Um, and our family self-sufficiency program is one of our uh, kind of ace in the holes. That's our, sam uh, our stabilization program. We work with you to reach your goals over a five-year plan. And while you're doing that, you're saving money in an interest accruing escrow. So when you graduate, 
uh, you graduate and you receive nice checks to purchase homes, to achieve different goals. Many of our residents will purchase homes, move out, uh, purchase their first vehicle after going to Linda and driving on the simulator and getting their driver's license first. Uh, so the family self-sufficiency program is really our, our backbone in self-sufficiency and stabilization. We can help you reach your goals, okay? Transportation. I'm sure many of you all see these NRHA vans around. Uh, we are working to get our seniors more active. Uh, we take you to our uh, recreation facilities, uh, you name it. If the, We just took a group to Emporia to the farmer's market and the meat market. Uh, we are coordinating grocery store visits uh, around the first of the month so that we can make sure that you have options for healthy food. Uh, so transportation provides senior transportation, but we also provide transportation to residents for the first six months of employment to and from front door to front door. All right. So if transportation is a barrier to anything, employment and or for seniors, uh, recreational, uh, it should not be. And you need to talk to me because we can get you transportation to and from. Okay. Uh, youth programs, many of you all know Mr. Julius Norman. He's our youth programs uh, manager. He works out of Calvert. Uh, something new that we're doing also is making sure that we have good youth people, good youth workers, program workers, um, all across our coverage areas. So we'll have a new office opening up in Oakleaf soon. Uh, so that we can have better resident engagement with our youth. Our youth programs, uh, they led our summer reading program, which I'm familiar with a lot of you all because we, uh, we handed out books all summer and read. We handed out over 2,100 books this summer to, to kids. And we're not finished. We're going to keep reading, right? Right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, he also has an out of school youth program. If you have any youth age 17 to 24 that have not completed school or have completed school and have not worked in the last six months, we need to see them. We have money for training opportunities. Uh, we have on the job work experience. Some of them will be placed down at my office. Uh, we have the ability to build their resume with them and get them the uh, credentials and the services that they need, okay? Uh, and then we also have uh, our new GPA or what is that thing called? Report card program. So we will be launching our report card program. Parents, we want to know about these good grades that your children are receiving. Children will receive incentives like field trips to Dave and Busters. Y'all like Dave and Busters? Okay. I need good. I need some report cards. All right. We'll also be looking into some um, some because reading is a priority. We'll also be looking into some um, possible magazine subscriptions like National Enquirer or Inquiry, <laughs> not that one. Uh, National Geographic and. Um, <laughs> As long as they're reading. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm worried about. Let's keep them reading, okay? Uh, but please, uh, as you see us announce our, our, our grade, um, our report card program, please, please, please help us celebrate these academics for our youth and the, um, encourage them to turn them into their property manager at FIC, to any of our client services representatives. Um, and last but not least, Julius also has a recreation program, which is new for us. Uh, we don't want the fees associated with playing rec sports to be a barrier to your child playing football or basketball or soccer or whatever it is. So we have the ability to assist your, your youth with registering for these type of activities. Um, and hopefully that then will uh, they'll stay engaged with us and they'll come to some of our other programs, okay? National Enquirer. Okay, thank you, Ela, for that update. Um, just by a show of hands, um, does everyone in the room know what phase they're actually in? When Steve showed the map, how many people in the room know actually what phase they are in? All right, all right, all right. We might have been doing a little bit of work. If you do not know the phase that you are in, I want you to see either 
Linda Davenport over here on this side or Gwen Williams in the mustard yellow shirt on that side to find out. That is not what I said. I want you to make sure that you uh, get into contact with either one of these ladies tonight if you have any questions about the phase that you're in or if you are in phase one, if you've been told that you're in phase one and you do not know who your personal point of contact is because it is very important that we get that information out and that everybody has access to information. For folks who are in phases two, two through four, according to the map, you're actually gonna uh, see Miss Wanda Green in the back. Um, Wanda, raise your hand, there she is. She will be your point of contact until we move on to the next phases, okay? So I wanted to make sure we didn't miss the opportunity to communicate that tonight. Unfortunately, David Heim, who is our, um, our, the, the gentleman that handles our capital fund um, projects, the fixing and repairing of the community um, on large scale, isn't here tonight. He fell ill before we, we had our program tonight. But just a few things that he wants me to communicate. Um, one, we are doing environmental reviews, which is part of the process to get the demolition process going. We got to study the soil and, and that kind of stuff. So he, we are in the process of doing that. But as we stated before, we are still responsible for the residents here. So things like the lighting outside, fixing and repairing um, things around the community, we're still in the business of doing that. I had someone say, well, why are y'all spending money if you know you're going to tear it down? Because you still live here. And because we still want you to feel safe in your community. And if we neglect these things, these are all things that can impede on your safety in your community. So we will continue to make that a priority for how we do business here at the Housing Authority. Last on the agenda, and once we finish with this last person, we're actually going to kick it off into the open discussion, is Karen Rose, who is our safety and security manager. So Karen, come and get your seven minutes. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it brief, uh, but really get to the point. Uh, I'm Karen Rose. I'm the safety and security manager for Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Uh, my job and my responsibility is to ensure that the Housing Authority has safety initiatives and more importantly, that we try to keep the community engaged. Part of my job is also the civil process to take care of uh, lease violations, those kinds of things. But certainly, uh, that's not the best part of my job. The best part of my job is making sure that I do everything that I can to make sure that our communities are safe. Uh, just a little bit of additional information. Uh, I'm sure that most are aware that we have a community resource officers program, where we've got officers assigned to all the public housing communities. How many know who their officer is for Tidewater? Let's see, Officer Valman, does that sound familiar? Okay. Okay. And sometimes I don't expect for people to acknowledge that, but Officer Valman is, is very prevalent in our communities, um, takes complaints, assists the managers, and more importantly, to engage in the communities. That's the reason why they're here. I have two security coordinators that are assigned under me. Uh, one is Mr. Rodney Williams and Ms. Katrina Salmon. Mr. Williams is the one that is assigned uh, to tap water gardens. More importantly, Ms. Kim talked about transformation. Transformation is not when we're getting ready to move out of the community, when we start talking about expenses, what phases we're in. Transformation, in my eyes, is right now. And when I say that, it is important that we take care of our communities right now. We know that we have individuals that come into our communities, that commit crimes, they wreak havoc, and they cause a lot of social concerns. That's not always our residents, and I know that. But we know what's going on. So moving forward, as we talk about transformation, we want to talk about safety programs, reporting, keeping our communities safe, and taking responsibility. That is all of our responsibilities. So I'm going to keep it short, Ms. Kim. I will be in the back um, at the table. Uh, I'm easy to find. I'm always the lady with the dreadlocks. Nobody knows my name. I'm the lady with the dreadlocks. But I thank you for your time. I look forward to working with each of us together. <laughs>